Hey, what's up, Scott Balkum here, and this is Raw Cuts. Raw Cuts is a cooking show by me, for you, because I care. I'm not a master trained chef, I'm not even a trained chef. I just cook good food sometimes, and the stuff that I cook that's good, I share it with you. Let's dive in. Today, we are going to be making a New York strip steak. And we're gonna be doing it in a pan. Now, before some of you get all upset, oh, you can't do that unless you're on a barbecue or charcoal or propane or gas or infrared. You absolutely can. The thing that makes steak tasty is char. And char comes from one thing, heat. And a stove can absolutely create heat if it's done properly. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, we need to have our area here prepared. We're going to be using this delicious New York strip, and this puppy is about two inches thick, and it is gorgeous. Now, we're gonna be doing a simple seasoning with it. We're gonna be using salt and pepper and garlic powder. And if you don't like garlic powder, it's okay but I highly suggest you learn to enjoy garlic because garlic is amazing. But if you don't, it's, it's, it's okay. So the way we wanna prepare this is we wanna get some oil on the steak first. Why? So that gives it something for it to stick to. So we're just gonna pour a little oil. And this oil right here is actually olive oil, but it's third press. You know what would be really good? we should start the fire first. <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna be waiting around for that to happen. So, we are going to uh, start this bad boy up. There we go, let's get it really nice and hot. Now, this is a butane stove and it can get really, really hot. So I'm going to actually turn it down because I don't want it to uh, burst into flames. Have a fire extinguisher ready if you do. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little more oil on here. And just get it all around. We want it to just, we want it to have something sticky for the uh, salt and pepper just to uh, stick to. And then we're going to end up putting oil in that pan, so don't worry. Next, we are going to put a little salt in there. So you want a lot of salt. Just go ahead and get it, get a little crazy with it. Why? Well, because this is a thick steak, and a thick steak means that it's going to have a lot of surface area, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of steak that doesn't have any seasoning. And that surface area is where all the flavor comes from that is not the uh, meat itself. I love garlic powder, so don't be afraid to get some on there, get it all over the place. This is a really nice steak. This is a prime cut New York strip. Very, very good butcher, Costco. And uh, it's, it's phenomenal. So just sprinkle a little bit of salt everywhere. Get it good, yep. And go for the pepper. I love some pepper. Salt and pepper really brings out the flavor of a steak. And, you know, on, on a side note, it is, uh, it is perfectly okay for you to use MSG on a steak. Uh, people are like, whoa, MSG, that's so bad for you. It's not, it's just a salt. And all it really is, is a flavor enhancer. And well, I mean, that's what you want. You wanna enhance the flavor. Do all the sides, that way, the flavor is there, because we're going to be cooking this to a perfect medium rare. Uh, now, personally, I like my steaks a little more raw than that. Not raw, raw, but you could just like show it to the fire and I'd be perfectly happy. But I mean, you know, just a little, just, just right before medium rare is, is kind of where I like it. But that's just me. You can cook it to however you want. But I would strongly urge you, if you like your steaks medium or well done, uh, I would urge you to, I don't wanna say the word learn, but try, try to get over whatever reasons it is that you don't like it and, and try it because the flavor comes from the meat and the meat, well, if you cook the flavor out, then 
well, there's no flavor left. So it's, it's a good idea to, to do that. Now that is really hot. Let's test it here. So when you put the oil on there, you're gonna wanna see that it is smoky. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's smoking a lot. We're gonna go ahead and turn that down just a little more. You can see how it's smoking. Smoking is good, but you see how it's moving around. Let's go ahead and get that steak on there because it is fine. Listen to that. That's what I'm talking about. Now we're gonna to continue to turn it down just a little bit. It's okay if it flames up, just, you know, put it out. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit of oil. It won't, uh, it won't cause anything. It'll be flame kissed. You remember, you wanted that barbecue flavor. Well, that's how you get it. Okay, so I wanna take a moment and talk about the cutting board. For, for a brief moment, we're gonna turn that down just a little bit. I also forgot to set a timer. So we're gonna do this on four minutes per side on high heat. We want the smoke. When you have the smoke, you have an exhaust fan, turn it on high. Put it on blast. Whatever you gotta do to get it as high as it'll go, because this smoke is going like crazy. Yep, that's looking good. Keep a little bit more on that. And so we're gonna do four minutes on the two big sides. And then we're going to do about one and a half minutes on each of the ends. And the reason is that is going to give it that perfect medium rare, that plus the resting time. And when we talk about resting time, you need to let your steak rest for almost as long as you cook it. That is the way to do it uh, because the steak is continuing to cook when you pull it off. So when you cut into it, it's, it's, there's the, the atoms are really moving around quickly because there's a lot of heat trapped inside. So you want it to slowly burn off that heat. And the way to do that is to set it in a container, cover it and let it rest. Now we're gonna do a secret and we're going to put in some delicious Kerrygold. Kerrygold is pure Irish butter and it is delightful. That is really hurting. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit because it's, it's splashing on me and it's burning me. And nobody likes to get burned, it's okay. So we're going to cut a nice slab of butter, just like that. And we're gonna have that ready to go when the steak goes in here. We're gonna put that right on top. So while we're waiting for it to rest, it's a great opportunity for you to make your side dish or we're gonna make a little sauce. And it's a simple sauce, it works great with a steak. You don't need a sauce for a steak. A really good steak, you definitely don't need a sauce, but it's nice. And it also shows you what you can do with what's in the pan because all that char creates fond. And fond on the, on the pan with flavor and you want that. So while we are waiting for this, let's take a moment to talk about the cutting board. A cutting board is, well, it's a centerpiece in a kitchen. It's a great place for you to carve your turkey at Thanksgiving. It's a great place for you to cut up your meat. It's a great place for you to cut your vegetables. And this right here is a fantastic cutting board. This was made by a friend of mine for me. And this is great. Her, her company is Handmade with Hearts. She started doing woodworking and I saw her, her cutting boards that she was doing. She was doing charcuterie trays and, and cutting boards. And I thought, wow, I've got to have one of those. All right, let's, um, let's flip this over. And we're gonna start the timer again. Now take a look here. Look at that. That is char. Remember that stuff we're talking about? That's flavor. And that's what we wanna see. And it's doing a fantastic job. So back to the cutting board. So I told her I was gonna be doing a cooking show and that I wanted a cutting board for me. And I said, I don't wanna tell you how to make it. In fact, what I want you to do, because you know, she and I have been friends for a long time, and it's, it's great when you know people. I said, I want you to make a cutting board for me that you base it upon me. So you know me, you know my personality, you know my energy, all that good stuff. I want you to make a cutting board that reflects me. 
And I got it the other day, literally just a week ago. I opened it up and oh my gosh, this is incredible. It's walnut, it's in grain. I mean, she did an absolutely gorgeous job on this. Look at this thing. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I knew I had to share that with everybody because this is such an amazing thing. And if you're looking for one, you know, head over to Handmade with Hearts, handmadewithhearts.com and uh, ask her to make you something. So another thing to talk about is knives. And when you are working with your meat or veggies or whatever, you really need some good quality knives. Now this is not a show where we're just pimping stuff on there, but I just want to get ahead and just let everybody know that it's worth it to spend a little money sometimes. And, and this one, these are not that expensive. These are dowel strong knives, uh, but they have been really, really good. And I've been really pleased with them. When it comes to getting char, you need a pan that can evenly heat. And it's very important that you get a pan or have a pan, and maybe you already have one, that can evenly distribute that heat and, and do it. Now this is an all clad, and I used to make fun of people who had really expensive cookware until I bought an all clad. And I gotta say, I'm really embarrassed that I didn't buy one before because it really will change your level of cooking. It's not just the confidence that it gives, because I mean, that's a real thing. If you buy something expensive, all of a sudden you feel super confident. It is the evenness of the cooking. You get an amazing, I mean, just everything that I put in there comes out great. It's, it's easy to clean, it's great. This is not an expensive pan by expensive pans standards. This one is like $120. Uh, I would highly recommend you get a good pan. It doesn't have to be an all clad. We've got 18 seconds left on this and then we're gonna flip it over and do the edges at two minutes per. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up a little bit because we're just not quite getting the smoke that we used to get. And I likes it. Ooh, that's look good. Oh yeah. Let's go ahead and start that. Now, if you have a thin steak, these type of grips, these, these, what do you call these? Tongs. These tongs, to talk to my uh, camera operator over here, my wife. Uh, tongs, silicone based, that can lock. Why? Well, this was a trick showed to me by my friend, Eric. If you have stuff that won't stand up on its own, take the tongs, clamp it down, and pull and lock it. And then you can just rest this on the side and it will stabilize your steak for you. Another thing I wanna talk about, and we're gonna be, when we cut it open, I will explain. When you eat steak, this is something that I've learned, it's personal opinion, personal preference, but there's a little bit of, of science behind it. Don't eat your steak in chunks. Don't just cut up into to bite size bites. Cut it into really thin strips, continuous, all the way through from the, this side to this side, just, just, just cut, 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 Why? Well, because that allows you to maximize the amount of seasoning to the meat itself, the flavor of the beef. If you just cut chunks, well, you might get a middle chunk and there's absolutely no seasoning on it, and seasoning is important. We've almost got it there. We're at two minutes and 19 seconds. We'll be flipping it over here shortly. Look at this, this is looking great. I'm excited, I hope you're excited too. Now we're gonna flip this over. Ooh, look at that char. You know, that char you couldn't possibly get. No. Oh, now we're not gonna wanna stay, are we? There we go. No, we're not gonna wanna stay. You gonna stay? You know what? Let's just do the Eric trick. There you go, it's resting easily right there. Uh, let's see, okay, so when we make our cream sauce, which we're gonna do as soon as we put this in there, we're gonna put the butter on it really quick, and then we're going to add in some, some white or some red wine. We're gonna turn this down just a little bit. When you pour in the red wine, it's going to go crazy. 
It's going to steam and all kinds of stuff. But what it's doing is it's cold and this is hot. So the reaction will break everything off the bottom of the pan. And you want to get a silicone spatula for this because it allows you to scrape without scratching. And that is key. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh Just kind of getting the edges here. Ooh. Hit that end. It's looking great. I want to hit that end right there. All right, that is done. So now we're going to be putting it into the resting dish. So we're gonna take this off, place it into the resting dish, and then immediately we're gonna add this pat of butter right here. Just go ahead, get your hands dirty. It's carry gold, it's like gold. Place that right on top and let it sit. Cover that up and we're good there. Now we've got this, it's hot. We're still cranking, let's pour in and I'll watch what happens. Okay, now go in there and just start moving around. Make a mess, that's what I do. I do it really, really well. Look at that. The, the bottom that was all dirty is now clean and the red wine will cook down. So now that we got that in there, next we're gonna add some heavy cream. And you want a little heavy cream because well, it helps thicken it up. It also gives it a really nice creaminess to it. That should be just about enough. You don't need, I'll do a little more. You don't need a whole lot. It's, it's amazing how much you can make and it's also really delicious how much you can make. So we're getting that, we're mixing it up. Now let's add in some more delicious, turn that up a little bit. All right, so we need to add in some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Because it's delicious. We're gonna turn that back down because that's really going crazy. So paprika, smoked paprika is amazing. Add that to in here, get it in there, good. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some more salt. Good, add some pepper, a little more, yep, good. And let's go ahead and just uh, you know, finish up with some garlic powder, why? because it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Okay, now start mixing that up. Make a big mess. Show everyone you dominate the kitchen. Just assert yourself as the dominant party in the kitchen by making a mess. That's what I do. So we're gonna let that cook a little bit. It'll start to reduce just ever so slightly. Now you can also add in some uh, mustard if you want. Uh, it will give it a little flavor. If you're making a pork, a, a mustard, just, just a simple ground mustard is fantastic. The next thing we're gonna do, and this one is key, we're gonna add some butter. But to add butter to a sauce, and this is something I learned, you never ever add butter when the heat is on. Turn the heat off, and now add in just, you know, two tablespoons of Kerry gold, and then mix it around. The reason is, is that butter will separate under heat. So when you turn off the heat, it's just absorbing from around it and it's melting. And then you end up with the creamiest of sauces. And it is, it is phenomenal. Check on this over here. Ooh, it's looking good. Let's get that butter going. It's, it's having some fun there. So keep mixing this, and then we're gonna pour this into a little bowl right here. All right, next, we're gonna pour this into the bowl. And get all that deliciousness out of there. And there is your sauce. We're basically ready now. The only thing we need to do now is take out our steak, cut it up, plate it, 
and put our sides to it. And we are ready to slice this bad boy up and look at this. This is a really, really pretty, pretty New York strip. And we have some green beans that we've made and we'll make that in a later episode. But I just wanna cut in here and show you what I mean. So that, the end is gonna be cooked more. There's that fat cap, look at that. That beautiful, beautiful medium rare. Nice and thin. Ooh, that's looking great in there. Cut through all this. Need to sharpen my knife. All that, that crust. Now there's nothing left to do but plate some of this up. So let's take a, a nice piece right there. Let's take another nice piece, lay it right on top. Look at that, ooh, that is gorgeous. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab another. Look at that, well, I'll just do one more. This will be my plate and my wife can have the smaller plate. She's smaller, it makes sense. Clean that edge up just a little bit there. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add some green beans here. And these are green beans with onions and mushrooms, and they are delightful. They really are. Put that there. Next, you know what? I'm just gonna add one more piece right there. Get that little fat cap out of there. All right, now we've got that. And now, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. That looks absolutely amazing. Let's add a little of the sauce to it and watch the magic. Well, you don't have to watch it, you get to taste it. And don't drench your, your food in the sauce. Leave, leave part of it for it. That, my friends, is an amazing New York strip prepared with green beans, mushrooms, and onion, onion rings? Yeah, just onions. So that, my friends, is how I prepare a New York strip inside and get that delicious steakhouse char and flavor that, well, only can be replicated by a pan, but normally it's done outside. And we're gonna be doing a lot more of these. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you follow along, I hope you try it. Go ahead and uh, try the recipe, let me know what you think. The, uh, the amounts that I used, it's not that important. Everything is a balance, everything is about the taste. So if you like pepper, Go ahead and go crazy with the pepper. If you like garlic powder, go ahead and go crazy. The cream, if you want it more creamy, add a little more heavy cream. It's all about balance and it doesn't have to be precise. Precise is when you wanna replicate, but that's not cooking. That is following a recipe. Cooking is about experimentation and enjoying what you're doing. That's thunder. It's storming outside and we're at the end of our cook. So. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down. It's okay. We can, well, I'm still going to eat this. And uh, let me know down below what you thought. What, what, what do you think? What do you want to see next? Do you have any other ideas you want to see me do? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm game for it. I also have a lot more in the can, or not in the can, but a lot more coming down. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And forks up. I don't know. I don't have a catchphrase yet. 
Forks up, dig in. Let's get, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's just try one. Let's grab this bad boy right here. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 